A uh, San Francisco startup called Preventive is pursuing research on editing human embryos to prevent hereditary disease. Backed by Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong and OpenAI Sam Altman via his husband? What? What? Yeah. Sam Altman's gay? Is he really? I didn't. Even is that, that Sam Altman and his gay husband? Oh, I guess they're just I didn't husband. Know, I swear I, I didn't know, know he was gay. I found that oh. out last night. My, my. I open AI. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, okay. Well, to each their own. Um, well, good luck with the gay stuff. <laughs> uh, the company quietly raised around thirty million dollars and began earl, uh, work earlier this year. Uh, the whole idea is what they're trying to do is they're trying to target uh, embryos that may have some type of genetic disease or hereditary disease and try and fix it um, with gene editing. Uh, Armstrong, Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coinbase, has publicly championed embryo editing as a way to reduce disease risk. Uh, he envisions IVF clinics of the future that combine editing, gene editing, with advanced screenings. Critics counter and say that science remains error prone and complex traits are poorly understood they uh warn of a slide towards designer children Jeez. and corporate eugenics uh, beyond editing a parallel boom in polygenetic uh, embryo screening mm -hmm. which offers probabilistic scores for disease risks and even traits like height or predicted iq are drawing sharp pushback from medical societies that see little proven clinical value Investors include, like I said, Brian Armstrong, uh, Peter Thiel, and Alexis Ohanian, who was the founder of Reddit and married to one of the Williams sisters uh, that have backed such services. So the question, you guys, are is anyone here in favor of genetic, uh, I guess, genetic engineering and then gene editing? They're going to identify <laughs> diseases that children may have and then fix those diseases via gene editing in utero so that way the children can be born uh, perfectly If that's healthy. where it stopped, maybe. But uh, you guys ever seen the movie Gattaca? No. It's a fantastic movie. Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman. Great, great movie. I highly recommend it. it the, the basic concept of this movie is that it's in the future where technology like this is possible. Gene editing is made available to parents where you can basically eliminate any childhood risk. You can basically engineer the perfect child in utero. Ethan Hawke plays a guy who was born just prior to this technology becoming available, he has a heart defect. And his projected lifespan is only going to be about 30 years. Uh, he you know, cons his way into working for a space program. He wants to go to space, but they only let the genetically perfect people apply for these things. So he has this elaborate charade he's going through where he's pretending to be a different guy, covering up his biological defects to try to compete against the people who are made to be perfect. Great movie, incredibly pro-life fantastic for its time i i suggest you go watch it if you have a, a few hours but this was the concept of you make your designer baby and then anyone who's not designed to be perfect is a second class citizen that is how this thing will be screened out and you talked rob about how they have screening in place right now like the the the, the first step is just screening you can't edit out the things but you can predict height you can predict iq the purpose of that is just to abort the undesirables at this stage. They will, oh, your, your kid's going to be short, brown eyes, IQ of 85. Hey, that's well, I was, what I, you talking about. That's me. Yeah. I, I, was look, <laughs> I was looking for a tall blonde with an IQ of at least 110. <laughs> oh so uh, I guess we'll terminate this pregnancy and try again on the next one. That is the entire point of this technology right eugenics. now. Eugenics. It, it, it's all eugenics. Yeah. But... Uh, you can't be in favor or against this tech. This is the name of the game. You know what I mean? I'm against it always being the same two or three people. Right. Sam Altman <laughs> and Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel also gay. What's with the gays <laughs> trying to engineer our babies? I'll tell you what? Exactly. Leave our babies alone, I'll tell you gays. exactly what it is, Rob. It is guys who, because of their proclivities, have removed themselves from the gene pool are now increasingly interested in trying to find ways to reproduce. It started with, uh, you know, just gay parents adopting. And you can have that debate if you want. Then it gets into commercial surrogacy, which is an absolute human rights violation against everyone involved. But for some reason, we keep doing it because human trafficking is illegal in the 21st century unless you're an affluent Western homosexual. And this is just the next step. They're also experimenting with, is it possible to create infants without the use of a uterus or an egg 
Like they are just looking for like basically just grow a complete test tube baby. Pod babies, right? Po- they're yes. trying to make pod babies yes. so that people who cannot have children naturally, most prominently billionaire homosexuals, mm. can make kids for themselves without needing to step outside their comfort zone. What do you think, Doug? What's your what's your take on the whole I think it's some Dr. Frankenstein type <laughs> shit, okay? I, I don't like it at all. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with him as far as Peter Thiel being involved. Saying all, why, why are these guys always involved? Why is it these same guys? Like, I, I don't trust those guys at all. Mm-hmm. And why are they all gay? I don't get that. It's kind of weird. I don't really understand. And they're promoting ch- children. We got a guy in Peter Thiel that's obsessed with the Antichrist that wants to create you know, freaking designer pod babies. I, so there's something wrong with that guy. Okay, oh, there's something thousand, very. He wrong looks. With that. He always looks moist. He has dead freaking demon eyes. <laughs> he always, okay? Omer, freaking, Omer, Omer, say, oh, if you look, wet. wait, if you can find the find the photo, of Peter Peter Thiel. His veins are popping out of his head, and he looks yeah, like he, he just l- got out of a bath. It's all like like, like a sauna and a sauna. meeting. <laughs> like he had a meeting in a sauna. Since there's gonna be a transcript of all this, and it's gonna be fed into algorithm, I like to make the disclaimer that I love our AI overlords, and I I don't agree with any of this opinion. Uh, Oh, you're protecting yourself because you're right. And I love homosexuals. <laughs> so that's now a, you guys are that's a clip <laughs> that's going to the compilation. But look, um, have you ever, guys, have you ever held a diver's watch? Yes. All right. You know it ratchets. Yeah. If I, yeah. All right. It, it only ratchets to one side. You know, it's, a, it's, it's one of the most ingenious safety features yeah. on a dive watch that when you're measuring oxygen, that is very key for survival, you, you can undo it and think that you have more time. Yeah. When it comes to these things, the ratchet of technology only goes one way, all right? And every time we push it one way, it, it doesn't go back, you know, unless you break the watch. You literally need to break the watch. This is going to be the name of the game. If I'm thinking of having children and this is a technology, like I will... I, I probably am morally against it, but I wouldn't like my children to suffer being second-class citizens because that's going to be the name of the competition. Like, you're going to have six, eight tall boys with a 180 IQ, and that's going to be the base level human. You know what I mean? So what are you going to do? Are you going to have, like, the, the, the rat-dwelling uh, normal kids? You know, like, I don't know. Yes. Now, all right, but would you do it? All right, say your kid is it's uh, in pre- utero they're taking a look and they realize your kid may have cystic fibrosis and hey your child can be born and we'll risk it and maybe he'll have cystic fibrosis or maybe he won't you're risking that he may and that'll be the rest of his life or we can do this gene engineering and we can fix the cystic fibrosis and your child will be born completely perfect would you rather have a child born with cystic fibrosis or would you rather have them utilize this technology to fix the health issues that your child may be born with but ah oh, man, like I, I'm, I'm, I think it's, that's the name of the game. It is what yeah. it is, and that's what I was saying. Like if it stopped there, I'd be more open it won't. to it. It in, won't. In the, it won't. Exactly. exactly. That's what I, I mean. Know it in the it. same way that Elon Musk's Neuralink but, made uh, Nolan Arba able to move a computer mouse with his mind. That is incredible. He is restoring function to a human being. There's always with, noble well, reasons yeah, given. There's always the advancement always, of technology. But it, every it, it, move goes we're, we're, we're in a Black Mirror yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're not okay. just <laughs> making we're not making quadriplegics able to move again. Suddenly it's about what if we take a perfectly normal healthy functioning human being and expand their capacity, begin integrating them with more systems. We begin changing the definition of what it means to be a human being. And Trans- that's where it gets real dangerous, real bad. It, Post-human, they call it. I is believe. this against God's will, though? You're mm. engineering babies in utero, uh, in my opinion, and I'm not the most. I'm out of. I don't know what your religious beliefs are. I am probably the least religious of <laughs> the bunch, and even I can recognize that this goes against God's design for everyone. Mm-hmm. Right? You're trying to undo what God has already done. And this is where it gets to be a real difficult subject because. To, to say, oh, it, you know, it's God's will that that child be born with cystic fibrosis. The, the issue is much dicier than that, and this is a thing that Christians and theologians have, have struggled with and tried to work out discussions and, and answers for for centuries. This is, you know, one of the core issues of religion. It's if God exists and is good, why do bad things happen to good people? Mm. That's a very difficult question that we could fill many, many hours going back and forth with. Mm. But to... To say that medical intervention is, is bad or against God's will is not true. God has never been anti-medical intervention. If there's a way to cure the disease, that's great. But in the same way that IVF was started as, look, there are childless couples who are struggling to conceive because of a medical deficiency. We are able to give them a child through IVF. Well, where does that lead? First of all, leads to 
uh, unused embryos being sentenced to an eternity in a freezer. And then it grows into commercial surrogacy and things like that that we just talked about. Do you about. remember the guy that it was born? He was born... Yeah, it was a kid who was just born last year or earlier this year. And he was and 30. He, he, was fr- he was frozen in the 90s. Yeah. Like, this is a, this is a man who should be in his mid-30s wow. who was just born about six months ago. And her, wow. And because they're starting to do embryo adoption, where these embryos that have been held in perpetuity by these IVF companies are starting to allow the people to adopt out embryos. Now, this is this type of research is actually banned in the U.S. right now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Designer babies. You actually it's, it's banned, different. Yeah, technically. For now. So, so they, yeah. they can't really do the, the full-stage clinical trials until the law changes. So are elephant tusks. Yeah. There, there was a like guy... You have, right, if you have yeah. the money, like... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a guy in China a few <laughs> years ago. I know a guy. He <laughs> made right <laughs> <up> my neck. <laughs> this guy made three children in China who are resistant to HIV, and he went to jail for it. Right. But he still says, you know, the children are fine, they're completely healthy. So, like, you want your kids to be resistant, resistant to HIV. There's no reason to go out of your way to make your children susceptible to HIV. But I, this, this just it, crosses it, the line it, for me, my it, friend. Yeah, exactly. If somebody offered you an implantable chip in mm-hmm. which you could live 150 years disease free, would you take it? Certainly not. Like, the, why? I mean, why? To, why to, not? to begin redefining what it is to be a human being with technological intervention, you are giving technology, and I believe this is also the, the official stance of the Catholic Church as well, Humberto, yeah. that to give technology and science a say in the creation and destiny of human life is contrary to God's plan. And that's that's a it's on a case by case basis, but that's about as good of a principle as I can come to on this. But I don't know. I, I think this this is moving forward. Like, did you guys catch yesterday Elon Musk about jails? No. All right. He said that with the production, the mass production of this uh, was it Optimus Prime or whatever robot mm-hmm. he made, uh, jails are not going to be no longer necessary because they're going to have a robot following you around so you don't commit crime. Can you well, imagine it goes back that? to the surveillance state that Peter Thiel and Palantine are trying to usher in yeah. across the United States of America? Well, I was reading a thing last year. No, yeah, reading a thing <laughs> last year. Uh, some company in Europe, because it's always some some, some European who's experimenting with ways to end the world. <laughs> they were talking about you know a, 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 the breakthrough possible applications of things like VR and things in in criminal justice reform. Mm-hmm. Of imagine if you can take a criminal who has been sentenced to. 70 years behind bars and you take him and you plug him into this pod with an with an AR headset and you know some some thing that makes him experience time dilation he can go in for an afternoon and experience 70 years in a VR prison and then he's completely reformed he's done his time and then he gets to walk home at the end of the day they were talking about like wow. yeah we, we we could revolutionize how it's like does that not sound like a fate worse than death? Yeah. There's a, there, you mentioned Black Mirror there's literally a Black Mirror episode about that of they plug a guy into a thing that's making him experience a thousand years a second Jeez. just for the course of a weekend, and it's driving him insane because he's locked in this little box for what feels like an eternity. So yeah, I'd rather they execute me than plug me into the thing that makes me experience multiple lifetimes in an afternoon. The merging but, of man with machine has exactly. like, always been nothing, my nothing line. Nothing good Nothing's going in my body. It's not happening. To warn us, it's not going to be good. Ah, right, but if they offer you a dead pack of man, I'm sorry. Ugh. I'm sorry. So if you like this clip, click right here. And if you want to see more like it, click right here. Stay angry, patriots.